Praise the Lord. Let's all worship today and get our minds upon the Lord. This song says that I've been touched by fire. How many of you here today has been touched by the Holy Ghost fire? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, let's just praise him for it. Hallelujah. Jesus blinded all my darkness. He sparked my heart within. His grace and mercy lit a passion, consumed my sin. Now like a city on a hilltop, I'll shine through the night. I am a lamb made for his glory. I will not hide. I've been touched by a fire, so let the It's alive and wild and free. I'm overtaken by his power, his spirit in me, his spirit in me, his spirit in me. I've been touched by a fire, so let the world come and watch me burn. Shout it from the rooftop, shout it to Changed my life, his name be lifted high. This holy fire burning inside of me. Jesus has changed my life, his name be lifted high. This holy fire burning inside of me. Jesus. Praise the Lord. Jesus. 
Jesus. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Pray. Hallelujah for, for that Holy Ghost fire burning Amen. inside of us. <laughs> Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Jerusalem was a shaking. Yes. Pentecost had arrived. A oh, oh, brewing party. They were drunk on the new wine. Yes. Well, Peter stood among them, and he knew there was no doubt. This Holy Ghost fire would make you dance and shout. Well, from his mother's belly, oh boy, the prophesied.
the fresh. ministers to line God, up up here. Fire. Get up here and help us lay hands on them this morning. All the ministers, quickly, come up here. Quickly, ministers, quickly. Every one of you, come up here and stand facing the congregation. You're going to pray for these people. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Sit down in my view. If you felt what we felt, you would be shouting too. It's just like fire. Shut up in my bones, that Holy Ghost fire. Shut up in my bones, it's just like fire. Shut up in my bones, that Holy Ghost fire. Shut up in my bones, it's just like fire. Shut up in my bones, that Holy Ghost fire. Shut up in my bones, it's just like fire. Shut up in my bones, that Holy Ghost fire. Shut up in my bones. Shut up in my bones, that Holy Ghost fire. Shut up in my bones, it's just like fire. Shut up in my bones, that Holy Ghost fire. Shut up in my bones. On on Elijah's bones, a dead man resurrected and ran back to his home. When telling folks the story, oh, you could hear him say, Fire, shut up in my bones, that Holy Ghost fire. Shut up in my bones, it's just like fire. Shut up in my bones, that Holy Ghost fire. Shut up in my bones.
know I love you. This is one of the most precious young ladies. Another one standing up here beside her. Precious children of God. I know what the doctor report says. Hallelujah, we worship you, Jesus. I'm going to ask you to believe the report of the Lord. Jesus. Jesus' name. To God be all the glory. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. I believe it's in order to give God glory for what he just did in Jesus' name. Would you praise the Lord with me? God, we praise you and give you all the glory, all the honor. Fire. Fire. Fire inside your bones. Fire. That that the enemy tried to steal from you. He comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Jesus came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. And the life is in the blood. The life is in the blood. The life is in the blood. And Jesus is in your blood. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. How many of you knows the devil tries to make you doubt? How many of you know Jesus tries to make you have faith and believe? And there's a war all the time between the soul and the spirit, body, the body and the spirit. And I praise God that there is victory and there is healing this morning. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. She lets you put your hand on her stomach. Lay your hands on Bailey. 
Call her beautiful Bailey so much, I almost called her that then. Healing for this abdomen, intestine, stomach. Son, Holy Ghost, move inside her digestive system, heal. God, any and every parasite trying to interfere with her wholeness, I command it annihilated right now and to leave her body completely and leave it healed and leave it whole. Listen to me, parasite. Listen to me, power of the devil that's trying to leave something that hinders her from being healed and, and tries to hurt her. I command you to take your hands off of her. This is a precious child of God. And you have no business touching her. You're trespassing, as a matter of fact. And we're taking hold of you and casting you away from her. In Jesus' name. Healed and whole from this day forward. That she'd be able to have a settled stomach and eat normal, drink normal, and she'll retain what she receives in her body for nourishment. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank God for Jesus. Praise God for what Jesus is doing. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. My Jesus knows. Just my Jesus knows. Just what I need. Oh, yes, he knows. Just what I need. He satisfies. Yes, he knows just what I need. My Jesus knows, he knows just what I need. Oh, yes, he knows just what I need. He satisfies. Yes, he knows just what I need. Praise God, he knows. He not only knows, he does something about it. These that came up for healing received just what they asked for. Exactly the way they asked for it. I trust that 23 years that we've been here so far, plus 70 years as of July the 1st that this church has been here, I trust that we have learned that God designs and desires to minister to you, his children, and how rich it is that God has given us all things. And things are cheap. Things are cheap. If I had a million, if I had ever had many here today, I don't know, it's hundred and something. 
if I had that much million dollars and I'd give you everyone a million dollars, I'd say, oh boy, I hope he gets millions of dollars so he'd give it to us. But may I tell you, all you do is spend it. And all I do is give it away. I have little to no need for money except to help somebody else with it. I see so many others that are less fortunate than we that need so much. And it gives us pleasure, all of us, to bless others in Jesus' name. If I see somebody by the road, they're genuine. I don't give to people that are not genuine by the road. There's a lot of cons out there, and you can see the difference, but people that are genuinely in need, it does me very much good. It makes me feel good. And, and we find pleasure. I have to watch that speaker. It's a, still hitting. It's a Lulu. But you receive pleasure by giving to someone and blessing them. It blesses you more than it blesses the person you give to. Amen. And I praise God for it. Some people are hard to give to. I've had people in need that was hard to give to. A person that was in the church needed some gloves. They didn't have any. It was an elderly, elderly lady. Did not have gloves. Her hands were cold. Winter time. Star and I went and bought her a pair of gloves. Nice gloves. They weren't 10 cent gloves. They were nice gloves. And we gave them to her. And she refused to receive them, gave them back to us. Brand new, still had the price tag, not the price tag, but the label on them, everything. And she refused to receive it. And she had rather go wanting and lacking than to receive something from somebody else. Now, let me tell you something. That's called P-R-I-D-E. And it's a sin in the sight of God. Not only do you sin against God when you refuse it, but you sin against the person that's trying to give it to you. I'm going to get in the message here. There are seasons that God has set aside. Oh, but let me come back to that story. There are others that will receive what you desire to give to them. And what a grateful attitude they have when they receive and you're blessed to be able to give. I was just thinking how that if Mike Walker was hungry, which he can't be, he's got his own place to feed other people, <laughs> Smiley Joe's, but if he was hungry and if I could borrow some money from JB, to buy him and Beverly something to eat, I believe he'd receive it in Jesus' name. I would. <laughs> Even if it was a, a T-bone or sirloin steak. That's it, basically, yeah. Both of them would receive that. And also the trimmings, baked potato, salad, sweet tea, dessert, homemade ice cream. I better get up here. <laughs> before I'm mugged and somebody wants me to take them out. <laughs> but how good God is, God wants us to bless one another. In Jesus' name, if it is Mike and Beverly Walker, God wants us to bless them. God wants us to bless them. And by the help and grace of God, we're going to bless as many as we possibly can. There's a... A young man sitting close to the front here, Brother Scott, him and his wife. God gave him a special friend named Sam in West Virginia. And he placed a special love in his heart for Sam and Sam for him. And they communicate real regular. But let me tell you that God touched Sam. And Sam is on his way to Jesus. 
And I praise God for him and for what God's going to do for him. And there's so many homeless people. There's homeless people right here that we can minister to and bless them. The message that I'm going to be preaching in the next few brief moments, and thank you, musicians and praise team, and for singing and ministering under the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, April, for obeying God. And I praise God for you obeying the Lord out in this congregation. And what God is going to do in this place still. My, I could have, we could just pray and dismiss and already had church. Already, and those that prayed in this altar, I praise God for you. My, you blessed me getting a blessing. Hallelujah. Seeing the fire of God moving in you. Be preaching about knowing God's season. Knowing God's season. It's important to know what God's season is in your life. You're in a season, and let me tell you, you may not know this, but there are at least 28 seasons listed in the scripture. There's not four. I'm not talking about summer, winter, spring, and fall. And autumn's in there somewhere. But God has 28 seasons that he mentions in the book of Ecclesiastes 3 and 1 through 8. And here they are. To everything, there's a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. Now, I'm not going to say a time to. I'm just going to say what it is to save space and time. There's a time to be born and to die. There's a time to plant and a time to pluck up. There's a time to kill and a time to heal. There's a time to break down, a time to build up. There's a time to weep and a time to laugh. There's a time to mourn and a time to dance. There's a time to cast away stones and there's a time to gather stones and to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. There's a time to get and a time to lose, to keep and to cast away. There's a time to rend, time to sow. There's a time to keep silence. There's a time to speak. There's a time to love and there's a time to hate. A time of war and a time of peace. There's a time for all seasons in our lives. And we don't like all seasons. We don't like them. But yet we have to go through them because through the 28 seasons, God matures us to be more like him. Amen. And we see, well, well, what good could this season be in my life? Well, you need to go through it. I'm going to show you some seasons in the, in the New Testament, Old Testament, New Testament as well. In Galatians 4, 4 through 7. When the fullness of the time, it didn't say when the fullness of times was come. When the fullness of the time was come. The fullness of the time. Chew on that just a little bit. God sent forth his son. Made of a woman. Made under the law. Jesus was born under the law. He brought in grace, but he was born under the law. To redeem them that, that, were, that were under the law. And that's us. That we might receive the, let me let me ask you, do you believe that what this word says up on this Amen. this board? Amen. I mean, do you really believe it? Amen. How much do you believe it? Do you believe it a little bit? Do you act like you believe it? I'm challenging you. I love to provoke people to think for themselves and don't just allow the person in the pulpit or teacher or people around you to form your thinking but allow the word of God to form your thinking you see the person in the pulpit tries to form your thinking the way that I understand the scripture and the person in the pulpit may not always be right you can say oh, amen they won't offend me 
that teacher teaching you may not, might not, might not always be correct. But the Word of God, this is always right. Hallelujah. I want you to see this, that we might receive the adoption of sons and without doing any discrepancy to the scripture, if I might add, and daughters. Because we're called the children of God. Jesus came to be born of the Virgin Mary, took on the, the humanity side, the flesh. He was robed in flesh that we might receive the adoption of sons. Oh my, this is going to get rich, richer than I am even. He said to redeem them that were under the law that we might receive the adoption of sons and because you are sons and daughters God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts. God sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts. Would you say this with me? The Spirit of Jesus is in my heart. Say it two more times. The Spirit of Jesus, the Spirit of Jesus is in my heart. How much do you believe that? How much do you believe it this much? Do you believe it this much? Do you believe it all much? He said, the Holy Ghost inspired holy men of God to write this, wherefore you're no longer a servant. <laughs> you're no longer a servant. The New King James said slave. You're no longer a servant. I love this. Let me say it again. You're no longer a servant, but a son or a daughter. And if a son or a daughter, then an heir, catch this, grab a hold of it, then an heir of God through Christ. Amen. How much do you believe that? I mean... You have mental assent that you say, I believe it here, but how much do you believe it inside here? How much do you believe that you are a son or daughter of God and you are an heir of God through Christ Jesus? If you believe it, say amen with everything within you. Amen. My great God, I may not go any further than here. Some may think I'm preaching blasphemy this morning when I say what I say. But according to the word of God, he said you're joint heirs with Christ. The Bible says joint heirs with Christ. My wife and I, everything we have... We're joint owners together. Houses, lands, our millions that we don't have, billions. But really, I have more than trillions of dollars. I don't know what's above that, quadrillions. I have more than quadrillions of dollars. I'm one of the richest men in the universe. So you, you don't realize, but my father... He not only owns it, he made it. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. And Jesus came down here so that we could make join us, be join us with him and join hands with Jesus. And Jesus wants you to know that we're going to receive inheritance just like him. Amen. My. He said it. The Holy Ghost inspired it. I'm just reading what the book says. He 
says that we're joint heirs with Christ Jesus. We're sons. We're a son and a daughter and an heir of God through Christ Jesus. Jesus made us joint heirs with him. That old song, I love that. It says, oh yes, oh yes, I'm a child of the King. His royal blood now flows in my veins. And I, who was wretched and poor, now can sing. Praise God, praise God. I'm a child of the King. Hallelujah. Praise God. Wherefore, you no more a servant. I said you no more a servant. But you are a joint heir with Christ Jesus. Through Christ Jesus. Through Christ Jesus. To God. You say, preacher, what, what is it that we're going to inherit? What did Jesus inherit? That's what you inherit. Amen. Hallelujah. That's a message in itself. Knowing God's season and knowing God's season of inheritance. I mentioned something earlier about people that were too prideful to receive. When they had a need, when they had a need, they had a need. And someone come up to grant that need. And they wouldn't receive it. A person is the same identical, full of pride way and full of sin when they won't receive what the Father wants to give to you as being a joint heir with Jesus Christ. I'm going to say this not to be offensive. But there are people that are ignorant. When I was a boy, we called it ignorant. That are ignorant of the scripture. They don't know the scripture. But yet I'm telling you, when you hear the scripture, you're held accountable for it, that you are blessed. God wants to bless you, and he has to chase you down to bless you. And he has to run after you and catch you and give you a blessing. People cry out and cry out and cry out for help and blessings when all the times the Lord and His Spirit is chasing after them to give them that blessing they're asking for. If they just stand still and quit trying to do it theirself. I'm going to say it two more times, not because I forgot, but because I've got to say it. They won't stand still and they won't receive it because they try to do it theirself. They try to help God. God don't need your help. Amen. God can do it all by himself. He wants you to receive what he's got for you and bless you and bless you and bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. When the children of Israel went into Egypt, God blessed them with food during the time of fatum, fam, famine. Excuse me. My tang got tangled. I know you can't relate to that because your tongue never gets tongued or your tongue either. During the time of Joseph in Egypt, you see, they got down there. Abraham went to Egypt and Joseph was in Egypt and God raised up Moses to de deliver them out of Egyptian bondage to freedom in Canaan. Here's a season. When God opened the Red Sea, they went through a season that opened. Father, cause their mind and spirit and soul and body to see. I pray for every person that they see here and every person viewing this by the internet. In Jesus' name, see what the Spirit's saying. There is a time... The Spirit gives you a season of open. That you're open up to see. There's a time that you see the blessings of God. See that God has given you so very much. Then they walk through the sea floor on dry land. All the time 
walking toward the promise. You know why they couldn't receive the promise? Because of their rebellion. They rebelled against God. God could have had them there in the promised land in two weeks. But they spent 40 years in the wilderness because of their stubbornness and pride and rebellion. God forgive us of stubbornness and pride and rebellion. God help us to see truth and to walk in deliverance and victory. When God closed the season, he closed the sea. They had to be on the other side of the sea. You can't walk in the open season, in God's open season all the time, or you'll be drowned when that season is over. You've got to keep moving on. You've got to keep moving on. The Spirit is speaking explicitly to souls here this morning and this, this time that you're watching it and hearing it. You've got to keep moving on through the sea. You're seeing the miracles on each side of you. The Red Sea waters are jellied like jello on each side. I think about the side that flowed south. Instead of it dissipating and going down, it was jellied and held up on the side. Ordinarily, nature teaches us it would have flown or would have the flow of the, the current would have flown down south. And it would have gone out of the Red Sea. But I want you to understand, God jellied it on both sides and made it stand in heaps. And they walked across on dry land. I want to share something with you that you know, or you already know this. God sent an east wind all night long. He not only parted the Red Sea to the right and to the left, but he also, with that east wind blowing all night, he dried up the floor of the Red Sea. He did more than part the sea. He dried up where they had to walk. In Jesus' name. They had to be on the other side of the season when that season was over and when the season was closed and he closed in the Red Sea again, they could not stay in the Red Sea season in the deliberate season of that era. They had to walk through on the other side and they had to be on the other side by the time that season was over. It's important to know God's season for your life. It's important to know God's season for this church life, for safe harbor. It's important to know God's season. We've got to go in God's season. There's a time in God's season to, to plant. And there's a time to reap. Planting time is not all the time, all season. Reaping time is not all the time. People get discouraged because they don't see reaping all the time because it's not reaping time in God's calendar. Amen. God has a planting time and he has a reaping time. And when they walked through the wilderness for 40 years, they were walking in a season of rebellion. That was not God's season. It was man season, man-made season of rebellion. They rebelled against God. They rebelled against Moses. They spoke against him. And some of them were swallowed up in the earth because of their rebellion. And then we go further. They had to come out of the season of rebellion. They had to come out of the season of rebellion before they could go into the land of promise season. Now, the land of promise season for you and me is not heaven. I praise God it's not. I wouldn't want to go to Canaan and that be heaven for me. It's not, it's not heaven. They had to fight wars in Canaan. They had to fight giants in Canaan. When I get to heaven and when you get to heaven, there's not going to be any wars and rumors of wars. There's not going to be any giants to fight against. 
We're going to have peace and joy and love in the Holy Ghost forever and ever. Hallelujah. Praise God. Before the exodus from Egypt, the Passover was a time of the barley harvest. Grapes have a skin on them, Ketsias, and they have to be totally crushed. Have to be totally crushed until you break the skin, break the skin, and the juice comes out of it completely out of that skin. You have to break the skin of the grape before you can get what's inside the grape. There's a message in itself there about the grape. We, from time to time, have to be crushed before you really get the essence of the juice out of us. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Some of you got it. Some of you... Phew. Watch it on the internet and you'll, you'll see it eventually. That God showed them how rich it was. Symbolic of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. Jesus had to be born of the Virgin Mary. He had to be crucified. He had to be buried in that borrowed tomb. He had to go preach to the spirits in the heart of the earth. Have you ever thought about that? Why he preached to the spirits in the heart of the earth? Why did he do that? Because they had never heard the gospel message of Jesus. Never heard it. I'm not talking about in the part of Hades, the burning part of hell under the earth. I'm talking about Sheol. I'm talking about an, an area under the earth where the righteous went and were not in torment that Jesus went and preached to the spirits under the earth. He was in the heart of the earth, according to the scripture. In Matthew 12 and 40, it says, for as Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, he was three days and three nights in the whale's belly. It wasn't two and a half and two and a half who has been up here and bothered this clock and turned it up to 12 o'clock? Who did that? Give me at least five or 50 minutes. I don't know which one I'm going to need the most. But I'm going to need more. I've got to have more. In 12 and 40 of Matthew, it says that he is, as he was three days and nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Now, I want to share with you, people say, they argue with you and say, well, he couldn't have been in the whale's belly because they're not big enough. I want to give you some, some history. And then I'm closing. Some baleen whales are up to 100 feet long and 40 feet around, weighing 300,000 pounds. Scott, I hope you never catch one. 300,000 pounds. A Mediterranean fish was caught and exhibited in Beirut, which had a head that weighed six tons. The head was six tons. A man standing on the lower jaw could not reach the upper jaw, the opening being about eight feet across. I've got so much more here I could share with you. And I've got it. I'll be glad to share with you after service and, and give you this information. But when Jesus says that Jonah was in the belly of a great fish, Jonah was in the belly of a great fish. I will take this over any man's word in the world. No matter, I don't care how many degrees they have behind their name, I have some proof positive of history, evidence, and you can't debate history and evidence because it speaks for itself. Amen. And I'm coming to a quick close. Oh, I've got to preach some more of this. I'll, I'll probably have to take it up next Sunday. Brother Ray's preaching tonight and sharing about Ecuador. But let me close with this. That just like Jesus was in the center of the earth, 
three days and nights. He came forth victorious over death, hell, and the grave. And Jesus is showing us that you're going to come forth victorious over death, hell, and the grave. There's no grave. Oh, I, I wish, Sharon, I wish you could sing that song. Ain't no grave gonna hold my body down. That praise team, I wish y'all could sing that. Oh, I wish you could sing it. Maybe you can learn it. But I praise God that Jesus is coming in this generation. I pray somebody hears this. Somebody please hear this. Jesus is coming in this generation. Prepare to meet him. Jesus is coming in this generation. Prepare to meet him. Jesus is coming in this generation. Prepare to meet him. Stand with me, please. Hallelujah. Dear Father, I've done the best to know how to do to preach what message that you give me. Lord Jesus, it's up to you now for the results. It's up to you to help these precious people with the results to receive what was given to them and to go forth from this place in this time, in this season and go forth and plant in the proper season and reap in the proper season and bring in the harvest in the proper season. And now, Father, I pray you search every heart, every person in this auditorium, every person hearing by the, the means of the Internet around the United States and all over this earth that you created. God, that you draw them to you now. And Lord Jesus, that they see your word, that Jesus, you are coming in this generation. You're coming soon. You gave your life to save every person. Every person. And you want everyone to be ready to meet you, to be saved. Not only saved, but ready to meet you. Not only ready to meet you, but serving you and doing your word and your will and carrying forth this glorious gospel. Dear God, there are those that are called to your ministries. For some reason, they're sitting idly by. And you've called them and chosen them. Perhaps it's from discouragement. Perhaps it's from discouraging words. Perhaps it's from some situation that they weren't mature enough to forgive and get over. My Father, my Holy God, thank you for drawing souls closer to you, nearer to you. Dear Father, I pray that souls will be encouraged here and across the U.S. and around the world that they will receive this encouragement from you. Jesus, you are coming. And if they're not ready, that they'll get ready and be ready and stay ready. God, that they'll receive all you have for them as a joint heir with Christ Jesus. Now, Father, take this your word and instill it in every heart and cause every spirit and soul and body, mind and being receive and act upon your word and do what you've told us to do. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Ghost, praise God, amen. Is there anyone that has a need? If you're not ready, ready to meet Jesus, I want to ask you to come. If you're hurting or you're cold and indifferent, you need to be encouraged or strengthened in the Lord. You need anything from God, I ask you to come. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Praise God. I know in the altar service previously, most churches have the altar service at the end. We may have it during Sunday school. And that's all right. I praise God for you being sensitive to the Spirit of the Lord. 
Hallelujah. We love you and we bless you in Jesus' name. God bless you all around this world in the U.S. in Jesus' name. Amen.